Do you love to drink coffee? In this video, we will discuss how doing so can bring about some pretty unexpected but positive outcomes to your health. We'll start with some background information about caffeine, including its usage, benefits, and harms, before moving on to examining a recently published study that provides some more details about how caffeine impacts the body. We will then talk about the implications of this novel information and close off with some final words. But first, let's learn a little bit more about caffeine. It might surprise you to hear that caffeine is the most widely used psychoactive substance in the world, with around 90% of adults worldwide regularly consuming it. This is because caffeine is found in some of the most popular drinks in the world, like coffee and tea. But over the years, the popularity of coffee has consistently increased, raising questions about whether this drink is actually healthy for us or not. Before talking about coffee's benefits and risks, let's test your intuition and ability to identify misinformation. Which of these three claims do you believe has a lack of substantial evidence to back it up? This is a tough question if you haven't done some background research, but give it a shot regardless. If you said that coffee preventing optimal height growth has no evidence to support it, you'd be correct. According to Harvard Medical School, this notion is often attributed to coffee increasing rates of osteoporosis, which also lacks any major evidence to support it. So you can drink away without any concerns about stunting your growth at least based on what we know so far. Height aside, coffee has been attributed to lowering rates of all-cause mortality while also increasing the rates of developing dementia. As with everything, there are pros and cons that should always be considered to make the most informed decision possible. These two findings I just mentioned do in fact have research to back them up, and pretty substantial evidence at that. A prospective study with nearly 500,000 participants found that those who drank a moderate amount of coffee or tea had a 22% lower risk of mortality. While another prospective study with nearly 400,000 participants found that high coffee consumption was associated with smaller total brain volumes and increased odds of dementia. These findings make it clear that while coffee might seem beneficial at first glance, it's not all sunshine and rainbows with regards to its physiological effects. With that said, the current research does still seem to support a fairly positive impact of caffeine on health. For example, another study investigating chronic liver disease found that among 500,000 participants, coffee drinkers had lower risks of disease, even including liver cancer. Finally, a machine learning analysis of three of the biggest cardiovascular studies found that higher coffee intake was found to be associated with reduced risk of heart failure in all three studies. Though these large sample sizes seem to establish some pretty concrete relationships, remember to always be critical in applying these findings to your own life. To share more information about the effects of caffeine, we'll take a look at a recently published paper covering the collaborative work of multiple labs at McMaster University. We had the privilege to speak with a PhD student who contributed greatly to this project. He will now give you a short summary of this influential paper. Hello. My name is Matthew Squazin, and I'm a PhD student in Professor Jacob Maglin's lab at McMaster University. Prior to our publication, the epidemiological effects of coffee were well established. However, the mechanism responsible for these effects were poorly understood and broadly defined. This meant that although it has been proven that coffee provides health benefits, nobody knew why. The paper we published in collaboration with Professor Rick Austin's lab provided some great insights about how coffee was exhibiting its effects, which predominantly seemed to be through caffeine's interactions with several proteins in the liver cells of humans and mice. We specifically found that caffeine was able to improve the body's ability to remove LDL cholesterol, a molecule strongly associated with cardiovascular diseases when it is present in high levels. Overall, our work has accelerated the current scientific understanding of coffee's previously mysterious impacts. For the sake of brevity, We'll move past the exact mechanism and all of its associated jargon, but if you are curious to find out more about it, please feel free to check out the paper for yourself. Links in the description. At this point, you might be wondering why this paper was so important and groundbreaking, which is a very valid question to ask. As it turns out, the current therapies for managing LDL cholesterol are not that great. So let's take a look. Statins are the current standard method of lowering LDL cholesterol. Their pros include easy use through oral administration, low cost of production, and a large amount of research establishing their efficacy. Unfortunately, up to 10% of the population is intolerant to the side effects accompanying their use. And additionally, cardiovascular complications can still take place even with maximal statin treatment. This made scientists investigate other potential therapies. 
which is where these molecules known as monoclonal antibodies come into play. These are man-made antibodies that can specifically target proteins in our bodies to induce therapeutic effects. In the case of lowering cholesterol, one of these proteins is known as PCSK9. While these monoclonal antibodies are extremely effective and well studied, they are quite expensive and require injections which isn't necessarily feasible considering the millions of patients that would require such intensive help. At this point, we can understand why the caffeine research we discussed is so important. It provides the potential to create effective, easy to use molecules that also target PCSK9, just like the monoclonal antibodies do, but at a fraction of the cost and effort. Getting to this point is still a hypothetical and would require a lot of work, but it's certainly important to acknowledge nevertheless. Hopefully you are now familiar with the current state of caffeine research. We would like to once again thank Matthew Squazen and Professor Jacob Magellan for their contributions to making this video possible. Unfortunately, we couldn't cover everything that the internet has to say about coffee, so we instead urge you to do this on your own. Try googling coffee and any other health-related term you can think of to see what comes up. Chances are you'll discover some fascinating relationship that is yet to be brought to the attention of mainstream media given the sheer amount of research out there. So give it a try, see what you can learn, and remember to stay curious. Thanks for watching.